a camera moves up and over dense woodland, revealing more of the clear blue sky as urban buildings appear on the far horizon. A woman and a man stand in green heathland, surrounded by bare trees. Captions on screen read Jeff Straker, museum scientist, and Alison Sheen. Believe it or not, we are actually in the middle of the city of London. Now, when you think of the types of wildlife you can spot in the city, snakes are probably not the first thing that springs to mind, but I am here today with museum scientist Jeff Stryker, and we are going snake spotting, aren't we? That's correct. And um, um, tell us what we're looking for. So today we're going to visit one of the few places in London where you can see a really cool species called the adder. So excited. This could be my first time seeing an adder. I hope so. Sh should we go? Yeah, let's go ahead. Over here first, I think. The pair walk toward the camera. It's a lovely spring day. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. The camera cuts to a bird's eye view as they wind through flattened grass. This morning when we woke up, it was, I think, one degree, or you yep. know, about 35 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, and there was frost on all of the plants around. Uh, you don't imagine that a cold-blooded animal would be active then, but actually as the sun comes out, things heat up really quickly, and they actually will use that, he that heat to become active. And this is very a very classic uh, part of their springtime activity as they get ready to mate uh, and build up their reserves for feeding and things like that. So this is the perfect time of year then to, to be able to spot them. Yeah. The camera pans across dense vegetation. So this is one of the reclaimed heathlands that I was telling you about, which is a great habitat to find adders in. Facing the camera, the pair continue walking through flattened grass among the lush green heathland. It's absolutely beautiful, stunning, kind of, you almost, it's hard to believe we're in the middle of the, the city, except for when the, the aircraft comes. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. The telltale sign, but it's, it's beautiful. I agree beautiful 100%. It's a, it's a wonderful place to escape to, and it's one of my favorite places to go to in the city. Definitely. The camera pans across bare branches sprouting from the grass. The pair walk through a patch with exposed earth and clusters of dead branches, eventually coming to a stop atop the dry, muddy area. We're actually walking through evidence of one of the big challenges that species like adders face in living in a big urban area with lots of people in it. And we're actually walking through burned parts of the heathland that local authorities have told us were either an accident caused by people or potentially even intentionally caused by people. And so this really highlights one of the challenges that these species face when they're living in such close contact with people all the time. You can see the area around all of the vegetation that we see adders concealing themselves in is gone. And so if they survive the fire, they have to go somewhere else. But there's only so much of this habitat that they can escape to. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's really, really sad to see this. And this is unfortunately not the only uh, bird patch in the area, mm. but it's a real pity. Is, is habitat loss, habitat fragmentation a big problem for snakes? It's, it's a big issue for snakes. Uh, like many terrestrial species, the smaller their preferred habitats become, the smaller the population sizes tend to become, and then essentially they get to a point where they're at high risk of local extinction, or what we call extirpation. Yeah, it's, it's a real pity, but there is, there is plenty more of a beautiful heathland to, to have a look at. Yeah. So should, shall we go and see what we can see? Let's do that. That sounds great. Bird's eye view moves over thick vegetation, bare trees, and patchy green and brown grass. The pair walk down a flattened grass path that winds through leafy bushes. Hadders are the UK's only venomous snake, is that right? That's correct, yeah. And how, how dangerous is their venom? How worried should we be? Well, it really depends. I mean, like any venomous animal, they're dangerous, particularly if you have a bad allergy to the proteins that are in their venom. But as venomous snakes go, and for the average person, they're one of the least dangerous venomous snakes, actually, particularly the populations we have here in the UK. A bird's eye view of the pair as they walk downward through a narrow, flattened grass path that separates two clusters of thick green and brown vegetation. The camera returns to a side-on view as the pair continue on and come to a stop in a grassy clearing. Um, so they, most people that have been unfortunate enough to be bitten by one survive the, the bite. But really, there's, there's no reason that people... Uh, but, well, what I should say is that most of the people that have been bitten by them are bitten because they're doing something they shouldn't, like picking the snake up right. or something like that. They really are the kind of wildlife that's best enjoyed from a distance. Absolutely, which is what we're doing today. 100%, so, yes, absolutely. So the, the best way to kind of approach and, and, and try and spot them is, is quietly? That, that's right, absolutely. And what we can kind of do is walk right along this grassy area here, and we can look in between the grass, specifically places that probably rabbits and other 
uh, and, and some medium-sized birds have pressed down the grass. They love to sit on top of those areas and, and really soak up some sun. The camera follows behind a close-up image of the pair's legs and feet as they make their way through the grassy heathland weaving between small bushes and thicker patches as they move. So if we just walk along the perimeter of this grassy area, it's possible we can see some. And what should we be looking out for? What are their kind of distinctive features? Well, we're, once, once you get a what we call a search image for them, they're quite easy to see. But until you have that, it can be very tricky because they have a mixed color pattern on them that makes them very difficult to see if, you, if you're not sure what you're looking for. Uh, they're quite cryptic, uh, but what we're going to be looking for them is at the base of these plants here, kind of just coiled up, getting some sun. The camera returns to a full view of the pair as they survey a very dense area of vegetation filled with dark green bushes and long grass. Jeff points to an area of dense vegetation. If you look right there, in between, okay, if you follow the, this clump of grass here and you look just below it, there's an adder sunning there. The curled up adder camouflages itself among oh, thick see, straw, grass, and twigs. So cool. The black and brown adder slithers away as its body gently unfurls through the vegetation. The pair stand on a level patch of grass with a woodland path behind them. It's been them. fantastic, Dave. Yeah, thank you so much for, for showing me around and, and, and Pleasure. showing me my first ever adder in real life. It's been absolutely brilliant. I'm so excited that you got to see an adder and it really was a, a wonderful way to spend a spring morning. Yeah, it is just amazing how, how close we can get to nature, how much incredible nature is just under our noses if we look for it. Absolutely. A bird's eye view of the pair as they walk along a grassy path that winds through dense woodland with thick green and brown vegetation. The still image of a scaly brown and black adder curled up among straw and grass, overlaid on the left-hand side with a narrow semi-opaque black rectangle on which the credits are displayed. Film, Lee Quinn. Science, Jeff Stryker. Research, Alison Sheen. Archive, Gustavo Barin. Music, Audio Network. On the right-hand side, the words Natural History Museum are displayed in a column flanked by a large letter N on the left. Text at the bottom reads, Copyright owned by the trustees of the Natural History Museum, London.